With the season more than halfway through, here comes another electrifying show for you. We'll see who delivered in the month of June and what teams may be out of it if they don't step it up soon. So get ready for the show that tells you everything you need to know on this month in Wiffle Ball. The comeback kids struck again in June. Down by two runs in the fifth, Devin Torres stepped to the plate and rocked Cottage Lane with this three-run shot. Two games later against the Yankees, he did it again. At 10 and two, the Diamondbacks have the league's best record. And though their hitting has dominated the highlights, their pitching has been a big part of their success. Devin Torres shares the league lead in wins with six and has allowed just eight runs in seven starts. Garrett Torres has found his groove on the carpet and has shaved a run off his ERA in his last two starts. If they get it done against the Royals week seven, they will probably have locked up a playoff spot. And that's a good thing because their August and September schedule is brutal. If the season ended today, Rob with Vampir Venanzi would be just one home run shy of a triple crown. With 10 games left, he still has plenty of time to distance himself from the pack. But the man with maybe the best chance to catch him is batting behind him. The Blue Jays' Kenny Rogers Jr. has put together a remarkable rookie campaign. With a 422 average, eight home runs, and 23 RBI, Rodgers has a chance to put up the best rookie numbers of all time. With so much hitting, it is easy to ignore the Blue Jays' pitching, but Oliver Avalone continues to deal, and waiver wire pickup Phil Frazello could be the addition to their staff they so desperately need. The timing couldn't be better for the Jays as they take on one of the league's hottest teams, Week 7. Since the addition of Rich Saglin-Benny, the Yankees have gone 5-1 but Anthony Bevilacqua has been a big reason for their mid-season run. During their five-game winning streak, Abev has either thrown a shutout or hit a game-winning home run. In five starts of the season, he has allowed just one run and is pitching to a league-leading 0.20 ERA. At the dish, his 220 average isn't anything to write home about, but with four round trippers and more than half the Yankees' runs, he has single-handedly brought the Yankees back to respectability. With the softest schedule the rest of the way, the Yankees are looking to keep rolling all the way to the playoffs. Yeah, baby. If not for a misplaced pitch against one of the league's best hitters and a 0-0 loss, the Braves would be undefeated. Clearly the class of the carpet, Tim McElrath and Tim Trenary have pitched to a combined ERA under a run. At the plate, Trenary is driven in 22 with six home runs. And when he's not hitting, Dave Fisher, Tim McElrath, and Eric Langs are picking up the slack. The Braves are a team built to win it all. They have the arms, the bats, and the remaining schedule to take the pennant. After a disappointing series against the Dodgers, the Mariners got back to their winning ways with a sweep of the Expos. In the first game, Mike Wiener delivered a pair of home runs and five innings of two-run ball from the carpet. In game two, Scott Fleeser tossed a 13K shutout, and this time, Sean Ryan was the hero at the plate with a pair of home runs that bumped his average over 400. With two of the best hurlers in the game, and an increase in production from Sean Ryan and Ryan McElrath, the Mariners are still in the hunt for that first round bye. What a month it was for the Mets and Rich Gallad. Gallad set the tone for June with a perfect game over the Braves. The following week, he became the first player to reach 50 career home runs. Then 51, 52, and 53. Though the league's best player will always grab the headlines, he has had some help. Nick Gallo is batting 300, and Matt Riegler is chipped in with four home runs and 12 RBI. If they can straighten out John Historico on the carpet, they have the makings of a team that can do some damage down the stretch. With the toughest schedule the rest of the way, they will be tested. No one has pitched more innings, won more games, or struck out more batters in 2015 than rookie Johnny Costa. Week five, he went 11 innings against the Mariners for the sweep, but it wasn't without some help. Gerard Fitzgerald gave Costa some breathing room with this leadoff home run, and then this blast in the third. In game two, he stumbled in the sixth, but was saved by this Greg Tyler bases loaded walk-off triple. The following week, Costa held the league's most productive lineup to two runs, and this time Anthony Didio was the hero with this opposite field shot to put the Dodgers ahead. With the Mets and Braves up next, the Dodgers have their work cut out for them. If they can split, they should be a lock for the postseason. After a miserable start, the Expos couldn't wait to put a winless bay behind them. Dakota Kenny kicked off June with a two-run home run against the D-backs as Bobby Daly held them scoreless. But just when you thought the Expos had turned it around, it all came crashing down. This has been a common theme for the team that has just one win on the season. While it's not over yet, it could be, but there is a silver lining. 
They will play the only team in the league that had a worse time in the month of June. It may be hard to believe, but the Brewers haven't won a game since May. Even more concerning, they didn't score a run in June. Victimized by the shutout, the Brew Crew has put up a goose egg in all but four of their games in 2015. Luckily, Kyle Von Slushingen continues to impress, but the lack of run support could wear him out early, as he must pitch mistake-free wiffle ball or suffer the consequences. With a rain makeup game against the struggling Expos, the Brewers better fix this end fast, because the odds of hoisting that trophy again dwindle with every scoreless inning. This season hasn't been easy for the Royals. That's a hit. But June was better, and that had a lot to do with the bat of Freddy Gonzalez. With a 513 average, seven home runs, and 14 RBI, Gonzalez has the ability to be a game changer. And that is exactly what the Royals need. If he and Jordan Robles can hold down the pitching, the Royals could play spoiler, or even make a run. But that won't be easy with the Braves up next. Here is a look at the standings after six weeks of play. That's all for now. Join us next time as we look back at week seven on the next episode of This Month in Wiffle Ball. <laughs>